What's going on everyone? This is Uncle Muscles and today I'm going to explain to you why I think that the AMD R9 Fury X is a good card to buy. Uh, a couple weeks ago I bought the AMD Fury X and uh, as most people here, people really weren't sure about uh, whether or not it was going to be a good card. I bought it because I thought it would be cutting edge technology, I thought it would be something new to the market something that was different from all the other cars, and hopefully I thought it was going to be the NVIDIA killer. So it turns out uh, it wasn't the NVIDIA killer. It didn't kill the 680 Ti, or the 9, 980 Ti. Um, that being said, uh, and I'm not going to go explain like all the different benchmarks and everything that's like which benchmarks are, who's winning and which benchmarks. They're pretty comparable in most cases. There are some cases where AMD wins, but for the most part, uh, NVIDIA has better FPS. That's fine. They can have that right now. Uh, most of those tests are being tested with, uh, you know, inc incredibly overclocked cards. And currently, the AMD Fury is not able to be overclocked. You can't overclock the voltages. You can't overclock the memory, really. You can't overclock the voltages on the memory. Uh, so, I mean, there's really no way to get any extra boost out of the card. Uh, that also being said, uh, it has water cooling. So, I mean, there's an incredible amount of leeway for the card to be overclocked. This card, I mean, when it was first uh, debuted, when it was first advertised, when it was first being discussed, it was supposed to be the enthusiast stream for overclocking. And I do think AMD's gonna hold up their, their, uh, their bargain here. I do think that the card uh, will be able to be overclocked. There's already a lot of evidence that says that there's a lot of the capabilities already implemented in the software. They're just not available on the card currently. So my guess is, and I think a lot of people are thinking this as well, that once the new AMD Fury, uh, the vanilla version, just the Fury by itself with the normal air cooling system and all the other stock or the, all the other options uh, from you know, all the other manufacturers, um, once that card comes out, which is later this month, there's going to be a new driver setting. There's going to be a new driver, uh, a new drivers that will be distributed for the card, and basically that will unlock everything for you know consumers. I'm, you know, I don't know whether or not that's going to be the case. But I'm so confident in the fact that there's already a lot of evidence to, you know, how the card's going to be able to be overclocked. But, I mean, as the card stands, the two are, are fairly comparable as far as graphics processing. If you overclock the AMD Fury, you're getting into uncharted territory that, you know, it may, it may actually outperform the 980 Ti. Now, that being said, the two cards are exactly the same price, and on the AMD Fury, you're getting a liquid cool situation or a liquid cool system, and also you're getting... Uh, it's just a better experience overall. If your case can fit it, it's going to be quieter and it's going to be, you know, newer technology. It's going to be more equipped for future gaming, essentially. So, I mean, you know, there's pros and there's cons. Uh, you know, currently, I'm not happy that it's, you know, being outperformed by the 980 Ti. I bought the card hoping that it was going to smash the NVIDIA. But at the same time, I did realize the risk there and I'm not disappointed with my purchase. I'm happy that I bought the card. I don't think that, uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't going to buy a 980 at, at any time. I mean, they were the same price, but I mean, really, I, I got excited about this card because it was a new technology. That's the only real reason why I bought a new card, aside from the fact that I started streaming recently and, you know, I want to, you know, produce a better stream and I want to be able to stream the games I like playing. It was, I could only stream Hearthstone with my old card. So, you know, this is, you know, an upgrade. Now I can, like, stream Grand Theft Auto and, you know, amongst it other, you know, memory intensive and graphics intensive games. So I'm very, very happy with my purchase. Um, I don't think it's reached its full potential yet. And I think AMD will correct that. I have confidence in that. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that. In fact, I'll post some links to the, uh, at the bottom of the video uh, to how to overclock your card if you're curious. Um, but like I said, these overclocking things for AMD right now really are, haven't been like completely finished yet and they're not really, you know, available for benchmarking and it's not really useful right now so i mean once they get it settled out i mean then the official statement can be made but so far amd is slacking as usual in the driver in the driver department and you know once they kind of get their shit together you know i really think the amd fury is going to outperform the 980 ti uh that's it that's really it i'm happy with the card i really you know i i, I like what amd did i'm you know, I really think that it's an enthusiast level card. It has the future in mind and it's there's nothing wrong with it. 
You know what I mean? Aside from the fact that it has, it has really shitty drivers. But I think AMD can fix that. AMD can fix that. So far, the, the card can't be overclocked right now, and that's the only thing you need to be able to do. Once the card can be overclocked, now we're talking like apples and apples. Right now it's apples and oranges. You're talking about a card with the 980 Ti, a card that's totally, you know, it's it's not really the same caliber of, of, of make. You know what I mean? It's an air-cooled, it's an old type of radiator. It's not like, it's not new technology. It's GDDR5. Compared to the AMD R9 Fury, you're getting a liquid cool system that's fairly comparable to the 980 currently, 980 Ti currently, and also it has HBF. So I mean, like these are all like factors you have to consider. But I mean, you know, I'm not spending. If AMD can, can produce a completely brand new product with liquid cooling, the technology that's never been used before, for the same price that the 980 Ti is coming out, why is the 980 Ti so expensive? I think that's a question everybody should be asking themselves. It's not really that important for the discussion, but I mean, like, you know, Intel is not, like, the best, they're not the coolest people. AMD, you know, they've been trying for a while. Um, and that, that's not really why I'm giving them any extra points or anything like that, but, like, you know, I don't feel like AMD's taking advantage of me when they sell me the graphics card for $650. When NVIDIA, you know, sells their card for 650 I feel like there might be something more I, I'm missing out. You know what I mean? This is, there could be either more that I'm getting from them, or I don't understand why their older technology for the same price as brand new technology from AMD. So that's that's my that's the only things I really have to consider. Sorry, it's a little bit jumbled. I'm not really going to edit this one out. I was trying to do a couple different videos already, but this one came out the best, and I'm really really enjoying talking about it right now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Please subscribe to me. I really do appreciate the subscriptions. It's I know it's starting off small, but it really does mean a lot to me. And definitely check me out on Twitch uh, TV, Twitch TV slash Uncle Muscles. I'll be streaming on the AMD R9 Fury X. That's the only thing I'm using right now, and I really do love it. So guys, check me out. I uh, really appreciate it, and uh, have a good one. Thanks, guys.